Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to jump into DaVinci Resolve 17 and take a look at the top five new features that I find the most interesting. Uh, if you follow the channel, you should know that uh, Blackmagic Design did announce DaVinci Resolve 17 a few days ago and sort of showcased quite a lot of the new features yesterday. And so I've been playing around with it for the past 24 hours or so, trying to figure out which ones I prefer. And so we're gonna jump in and sort of go through my favorite features in no real particular order. Um, and keep in mind that just because I'm showing you five features today, there are hundreds of changes with DaVinci Resolve 17. So let's have a look. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the UI improvements. So they've just made a lot of the buttons and all these sorts of things a little bit bigger. As you can see here, we're in the edit page and over in the inspector, you can see that all these different buttons are a lot larger. So if we were to drag a video clip down onto the timeline, You've got our metadata options there and all this sort of stuff, which is cool. It all, almost makes this little tab here a little bit less important because we have the information here. And even then when we go into the effects library, you can see that all these different things now have larger buttons. We have a little bit of a sort of preview when we go over things and all that sort of stuff, which is really, really cool. So I like the buttons and when you hover over it, Everything's just a lot faster. You get a really nice sort of preview in terms of how everything works. You can see there, you got a nice little preview. And this carries across into not only the edit tab, but also in Fusion, if we were to jump across into Fusion, all the tools here, just bigger buttons in general, and making it a lot more friendlier to use. Even here, you can see there. So making DaVinci Resolve 17 more friendly to use and just easier for everyone. So those are the UI improvements, really cool. Like the big buttons, it just makes things easier to navigate. The next thing I wanna talk about, sort of like a continuation with that, and that is the new transitions and title upgrades in DaVinci Resolve 17. So let's have a look at that. So if we were to go to the effects library and we have our titles and video transitions, the first thing you're gonna notice is just how, more, there's just so many more that they've added, especially with the fusion transitions. So is if we go to the effects library and we have a look at some of these transitions, one of the things is really cool is you get a sort of a really cool example here of how it operates. And regardless of whether or not if you have footage on the timeline or not, so even if I delete this footage, you still get a sort of a default sort of look at how that would work. And I think they've done it really smart. Like they haven't built in a really smooth preview, just a really basic one. What that does is allows it to remain relatively low in terms of memory bandwidth on your computer but you still get a decent look at how it works. Cool, so here we have our two bits of footage. If we wanna drag a transition down, it's exactly the same as what we would normally do, but what I really like now is these fusion transitions. One, they've added a lot of the transitions that a lot of us tend to use, like the zoom in and all that sort of stuff. So we could go crash zoom. So we pull that down, chuck that on, and we have this cool little zoom effect here, which is nice. But if we were to click on the transition, you can see here, and even if we're not, if we click the video clip here in the inspector, we can actually access the transition. We can increase it. Um, I think 10 frames is probably the longest we can do. And you can change what side it's on. So we can have it just a single side transition or we can just have it across both clips. So that's pretty cool how you can affect it. But what I really like is this little fusion button is if you click that, it takes this transition into fusion and then we can add our own little bit of effect to it. So if we were to say like get like a color effect or something like that, let's say we wanna do like an invert color and we just wanna chuck that on. If we go back to the edit page now, it only applies it to that little transition there. So you can see that's really cool. And on top of that, if we're in Fusion, we can actually export this as a transition for it to use. So really cool that you have that effect there to go in and change things like that. Likewise, with the titles, not only do we have a lot more to be able to use, like they've added a pretty much I don't even see why you need title packs anymore. They've just introduced as many as we really need. But like say this one here is kind of a cool little title. It's kind of like a little bit of a I don't know, cartoony kind of title. You got the same thing here. If you click on it, you can go through and you can do your normal things that you could do before, change the color and all that sort of stuff. But you can also take this one into Fusion directly and you can see, you can double click on this, see how they've actually created it and go ahead and add a little bit more to it if you really want to. So. I just think that that's a really smart way of doing things. And also just like in terms of performance, I'm finding that this is just loading way faster than what Fusion titles used to in the past. So props to the Blackmagic team for making it work 
faster. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is, I guess, resizing composition. So previously, if we were to say, create content for YouTube, but we also want to export something for Instagram or Twitter or something where it's more vertical based, we would have to go in and manually track the scene so that you know the subjects stay within the scene. DaVinci Resolve 17 fixes that, so let's have a look at that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to right click on the timeline, we're gonna change the settings to a vertical video. So we're gonna go, not project settings, we're gonna change it to 1080p by 1920. So what that's going to do is make it vertical. And instead of scale image, I'm gonna do um, scale full frame with crop and we're gonna go okay. And in the individual media settings, we can go over here and you'll see an option So another cool feature is the fact that you can now bring audio into Fusion. As someone who uses Fusion a lot for effects, this is super, super useful so that you can easily time the effects with music and sound effects rather than having to keep jumping back to the timeline. So let's have a look at how that works quickly. So here we have our scene and if we want to maybe bring in a sound effect, we can go to our sound library and we've got bike bells. We can chuck that down, pretty cool. And then, so here we got the bells there. Awesome. Now, if we want to bring this into Fusion, all I would do is select both of them, have the playhead over both and go to Fusion. And here we have our media in node. But if we were to say, open up the keyframe editor, you can see now we have a drop down and we have our left and right audio. Now with the media in node selected, we can have a look at the audio settings here and we can have a look at how to display it. So we can pick which sort of track to display. So I'm displaying the so I'm displaying the obviously the one audio track we have, and we can also increase, change the offset, and you can also change how it looks in the viewer. So then now we can play it through, and now you can hear the sound effects. So you can offset the sound effects if you need to, to match up with the effects that you plan on creating. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about the color page. Now, DaVinci Resolve started off as a colorist software, so it makes sense that they've added a bunch of new adjustments to the color tab. And I wanna show you my new favorite one. I'm not a colorist by any means, but I think this is a really handy feature for people to have. So if we jump over onto the color tab, we have this new one, new option here called the color warper. And we've got different types of grids that we can have a look at. I'm going to be looking at this one and what I really like is when you've got it selected, you can pick a color and it's going to show you where this color is and this has got your luminance and your saturation. So basically we can desaturate it, make it a bit warmer, make it a bit cooler, we can make it a bit brighter. You can see it's mainly affecting the sky. Now if I wanted to do the skin, I can click there and it shows me exactly which point to do and now I can do that and brighten that without having to change the sky and very quickly, you know, we've been able to change this entire scene to make it look a lot better. So I think obviously it's gonna take a lot of playing around to get these effects right in there, but I love the effect. I love this new sort of feature and you can like click and drag multiple points and do some really sort of crazy adjustments there as well. So you get, there you go guys, those are my top five new features of DaVinci Resolve 17. Definitely expect more content on this new release in the coming days and weeks. I'm gonna be playing around with the software and seeing you know, what you can do with DaVinci Resolve 17. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But until the next video guys, see ya.